How do I know when the air is out of my lines? Well, when it quits spitting. Yeah, when it quits spitting, there are no more bubbles. That's pretty simple. Right. I don't have any brakes. Well, there's a whole lot of yeah, there's a ifs lot of there. Um, if you have no brakes and you have flood, there's something definitely wrong with your brake, the busted springs, anything it could be. You need just to go through and start eliminating one thing at a time till you find the problem. Normally if you have no flood, check for your lines at all the connections where it goes into your calipers. Look where it goes into your rear wheel cylinders. Look for the leakage running down on the inside of the, the brake drum, running down on your rim, on your tire. Uh, if you don't see any on front or rear tires, then start looking at all your lines. Anywhere you have a fitting, start looking. That's if you have no uh, brake fluid in the car. You've got a leak somewhere. I'd like to usually put it up off the ground and uh, try all the wheels also. If you spin it free, you can tell if you're getting some kind of brake. It may be one wheel that's not working. You may be getting fronts, not backs. But with the modern master cylinders, if you do tear a line off, at least you're only losing half your brakes, front right. or rear. Right. Um, In the old days, you only had a single wheel master cylinder. If you lost the line, you, you lost, lost your brakes all altogether. Brakes. And, and I've had two where using used parts, I thought the uh, the wheel cylinders were good, and my wheel cylinders were frozen up in the back, and I couldn't get back brakes no matter what I did. Right. Well, the wheel cylinder was locked up, and it wouldn't allow, no matter how much pressure I was putting on it, I did, couldn't get enough pressure to push that cylinder out. Right. So he was running on those front brakes. So there's no one answer. If you don't have brakes, I mean, just definitely search until you start finding problems and then right. go from there. Easiest is to look for leaks. Then mm -hmm. after leaks, start looking deeper. I do I need power brakes? On a street rod, like a T-bucket, Model A's, 32's, it's a personal preference. A lot of people like it because their wife drives a car and she feels more at ease putting it down. A light car like these and street rods, you don't really need it. It's nice to have them. It's nice because so much easier, you know, when you get out of your new Lexus and get into your street ride, you know, you used to you'd have a little bit of uh, that good feeling of the brakes, easy to push down. But there again, it's, it's nice, it's a personal preference. And one of the things too, your, your torque converter and your engine idle has a little bit to do with how much you have to hold your brake at a stoplight. Right. I mean, so you want, in these cars, we use a little bit higher stall speed on our torque converter. Right. And um, if the car's not wanting to push at the stoplight, and it's actually stopped without until you give it a little bit of gas, either way, it's what you want. Exactly. That's what it comes down to. Like power steering. You know, you really don't need power steering on a street rod. But there again, someone's wife drives the car, and uh, it makes it easier for her to drive. Power steering makes them a little bit squirrely. Um, well, on these, I mean, we're, we're talking about T-buckets here, and power steering is just, you don't need no. power steering. It's, it's just too loose. Right. You know, one thing when you was talking about setting up your brake, you want to tell them about that and make sure that you've got your copper fittings, top and bottom. This here's the banjo. I guess you can kind of... Is that where it comes from? Looks like a banjo, sort of, kind of? I don't know. That doesn't look like the one the boy was playing on the bridge oh. in uh, Deliverance. <laughs> and then we have the banjo bolt. And this bolt, if you looked at it close, it has a hole through the center and kind of a space in the hole on the side. So when you put it through here, fluid can come out of the master or out of the uh, caliper, through the bolt, through the banjo bolt, and out the abraded line, which screws onto the end of that. Now, on the calipers that we get, you can see there's a couple washers, but these are actually crush washers. They're a brass washer. And you want to make sure you get one of these washers both on the top 
and on the bottom. Okay, once you put the crush washers on, just screw the bolt in, make sure it's good and tight and you don't want no leaks there. Now a lot of parts, I mean whether it be the motor or whether it be uh, sometimes the steering is tight to the block. On this sometimes your braided fitting is tight to the casting here. There's no reason you can't cut off a little bit of this casting or grind it off on the corner if it's too tight. Right. On certain bends on them uh, braided lines, uh, you can't get it to fit right without trimming that and you won't, there's nothing you're taking away from uh, no. the integrity of the part. Uh, I mean common sense, you can see there's parts on here that don't need to be there, it can be trimmed up and cleaned and I mean you could get crazy and grind it and smooth it and right. make this thing polished if you want. But. Right. Uh, and one Make thing, sure it's tight. That is the key issue that you're exactly. not leaking out of there. Right. And in street rotting, nothing's an exact fit. You have to play with everything. Well, how'd you like to just double flare things?